Why are EG first picking this Enchantress hero? In the first game of this loser bracket semifinals against Alliance, Enchantress was banned by Alliance. And then in the second game, Alliance had first pick. They picked this Treant and EG responded by first picking Enchantress. That's what we're going to find out. Why is this hero so strong? Why is it valued so highly by EG? All that coming up. My holiness deepens. Welcome to the Church of Obelis. So they concede both runes at top, they get both runes at bottom, fair split here. And what Alliance are doing in this game is that at the start they're going to play a tri lane to secure Nico Baby's farm at the start and to shut down this Enchantress. Because Enchantress is a very strong laner and if you just lane 2 and 2, you're most likely going to lose. So that's why right at the start, Quill is going to uh, uh, bring this uh, second creep wave along with him. They know or at least suspect that there's this trialing going on because they only see this uh, centaur on his own. So rather than just uh, trying to lane a disadvantage, they just do this pull. Hanskin is there to uh, disrupt it or at least uh, put some damage on crit, punish him a little bit for this uh, pull. Was crit with his uh, boots first and uh, no region here. Is gonna have a, a hard time against his harass. But he has successfully abducted this creep wave and uh, in the meantime Enchantress is coming along here because uh, Nico Baby is also bringing the uh, creep wave here behind the tower so uh, it's going to make it a little bit harder for Enchantress to get XP, but she's still just running around here. Enchantress, of course, naturally quite a fast hero. No longer the fastest hero in the game as she used to be, but still reasonably quick. And so you can just run away here from this Treant. Rams is just pointing along and trying to get what last hits he can. Now they're going on him. Uh, you have to avoid this Nature's Grasp. He's just running around this, using his heal and uh, staying healthy. He's not going for Enchant here uh, at the start of this lane. The thing about Enchant is that it's a very aggressive ability, especially level 1, it only lasts for 30 seconds. So if you're using Enchant, you just want to make uh, a play happen, you want to make a kill ideally. But uh, given that they have this numbers advantage in this lane, they just want to play def defensively. So he's going to be level up uh, Nature's Attendance, which is a very strong defensive ability of course, because there's no burst in this um, alliance lane. All they have is just damage over time. They have these slows. And uh, the attendance is great against that, obviously. They go and enchant us again. He, he has to heal again with level 2 in its attendance. Uh, getting a lot of heal here. And it's very important actually to get the second level in, in the heal. Because the heal level 1 doesn't do very much. Level 2 just does actually twice as much healing uh, or thereabouts if you um, work out the maths. So getting at least the second level in nature's attendance is, is quite crucial here to stay alive against this tough lane. If you look at the last hits, uh, both offlaners are doing really poorly. Only 6 last hits for, for Ench, now 7. And uh, meanwhile 33 on his centaur is also really getting, um, uh, getting denied here against this uh, dual lane of uh, Faces Void and Lich. Now he's getting some last hits here, as is our Ench. They're going on Ench again, and this time you're going to have to run the top. Uh, running through this is uh, you're just so slow. You're going to try to chew through the trees, but it's difficult to chew against the tree. So he falls, unfortunately. Um, but the thing is, this is a lane where it's kind of okay to die. Like he's laying here one against two while Crit is doing this pulling shenanigans. And like this this kill doesn't really matter. These these kills uh, it's a first blood which which sucks, but uh, even so he's still getting about as much as the centaur, um slightly less in levels, but it's okay. Denied. If you have the choice between contesting the lane and dying occasionally and uh, just like staying back and not dying definitely try to contest the lane because lane, lane creeps are so important um, compared to kills 
Like if if you get like one one uh, wave of creeps, that's that's way more important than than uh, one kill or one death. Rams is, is quite poor, so it's going for very efficient items. He's gone for Ring of Bassi, uh, of course, really efficient item, a bunch of attributes, and a lot of mana region. Even though it's been gone on again, again trying to um, dodge this. Uh, um, what is it called again? Nature's Grasp. I keep forgetting this ability. Um, dodging that, but he can't, so he just TPs out. So um, he's playing against a lane that has not any stuns as long as Willow is not there. So that's why I can easily TP out. And of course, he TP back to the tower, not to base. If you TP back to base, that's almost as bad as dying. You're just going to lose too much from that. So he's gone for this Bassy, he's gone for, for a Bracer, some nice extra strengths and nice extra uh, stats. He just like needs in, in like enough HP not to get uh, bursted. That is what he wants as as Ench. And um, uh, then as soon as you get to level six, this is especially important because uh, then you're just uh, really strong against like non-burst damage. So just having like a little bit of extra HP is goes quite a long way in Enchantress because she has such a low strength gain. Even though he's struggling in this lane, you can see how strong of a laner Enchantress is. Because like most heroes in this lane would, would get even less. And um, she's almost in the same level as Lifestealer. It's been gone on here again and there's no escaping this. Tries to run it off but it uh, doesn't work. Like this Lifestealer is up one level on her. Uh, that's, that's not too bad honestly. If you look at this Faces Voids, he has two levels on this uh, Centaur. So um, uh, Rams is actually doing fine. Even though he's 0-2, which is uh, never a nice feeling, he's still doing well enough in this lane. So I'm last sitting on the tower, definitely need to um, prep this hit for on this, on this range creep. Um, very nicely done here from Ramses. He's also gone for a magic wand, very efficient item on almost any hero and enchantress especially. Because you have such a low HP pool, uh, getting this burst shield is uh, especially great. And now that... He sees that the enemy heroes are no longer nearby here, or at least he doesn't see anyone nearby. You can sort of cautiously approach this this uh, wave, but you see you see how far he's staying away. He doesn't want to get too close to these creeps. He doesn't know where the enemies are. He doesn't want to die too often. And he has TP cooldown right now, so uh, at this stage it would be really bad to die. As long as you have uh, TP to get back to the lane, dying is not that bad. And Nico Baby, by the way, going for this newfangled Maelstrom build. It's gone on an Enchantress again here, but she's level 6 now, so it's a lot more difficult to actually kill her. So, as soon as you get this level, level 6, um, especially against a hero like Lifestealer, you're much, much more tanky. And now they see this rotation here from Faces Void with this Chrono. Fortunately, Chrono is uh, Enchantress as well, but at least they get one kill on this uh, very valuable Lifestealer. They're going to try and get more, and here just want to run away from this Siphon, and... Gonna try to get this kill, but they get doinked here, and they can't really get anything here. Fighting over the shrine here, and they're trying to get the street protector here, and he does die. With the gold he got from his two kills, he's going to go and buy uh, most of the treads. Treads, of course, very strong item on Enchantress. If you really like attack speed, it really boosts your damage with impetus, and uh, just the extra. Uh, HP from strength threads is very nice, as is the extra int from int threads, because you do have uh, both HP and mana problems on Enchantress. They're hitting this tier 1 tower to get the Cata wave, but TPs are coming in. This death buffer does have exorcism. Uh, doesn't quite want to pop it yet, because you just, uh, just want to exorcism and then have them run away. So they get this tiny kill, Enchantress meanwhile. Is walking up here, but uh, it's difficult to escape here. <laughs> so uh, Rams just basically accepts his death and is just going to say, "Okay, I just want to get this one last hit," and he does get the last hit. Unfortunately, not quite enough to um, buy this belt of strength. Rams is now running into lane, not TPing to preserve his TP cooldown, because he knows like, there's no really, there's no saving this tower. So he just wants to go here, and he arrives here as um, fast as he needs to. And now you can maybe just uh, farm this this lane. They, he knows that they used exorcism, so uh, probably lions don't want to fight right now. So it's fine to to, to um, farm this lane. But he sees this um, center here, so he has to be a bit careful because center it can do a lot of damage to enchantress because he does so much magic damage with 
his abilities. Uh, so now he's a bit far forward here, he's gonna try and run away now. Um, and he is untouchable, but there's so much magic damage in this team, so I guess he stayed a little bit too long here. It was fine at the start, but then he just stayed too long. Big team fight in the middle here, and Enchantress is just now uh, respawned and arriving. And he's just gonna try to stay in the altars of this fight and chuck his spears. He uses slow and death profit, but uh, she's too healthy. So he has to just run away now. And uh, please go into strength threads. Very important to go into strength threads if you're uh, uh, being stunned. So, um, trying to get this death profit. Just stay in the outskirts of this fight and chuck those spears. Very basic. Uh, this enchantress fits really well into this lineup. They have this uh, uh, great frontliner with the uh, chronosphere on the faceless void. They have this tiny as another frontliner, can sort of disable people. Uh, they have this um, uh, TA who's also kind of a frontliner. Uh, it's, it's not a very durable hero, obviously, but uh, it's also more or less a melee hero or short range hero at least. And so it makes a lot of sense to also have this enchantress sitting in the back lines and doing a lot of damage. Uh, that's a lot of damage. One of the great advantages of Enchantress in the, from a drafting perspective is that you can play her in position 3, 4 and 5 that makes her quite flexible in drafting that's also a big reason why she was a strong first pick. And Rems also picking up here a Dark Claw Summoner, this is a very great uh, creep for pushing out waves. Now he has 2 points in Enchant here after not putting any points into it in the laning phase because he just didn't want to be aggressive. But now that he has a bit more freedom can afford to take this uh, two points here, which uh, allows him to have these creeps for a full minute, which is enough to do a lot of stuff with them. You can uh, summon more creeps here, more more skeletons, but uh, doesn't quite um, get it. it. Takes over this Valving Ripper. This is a great creep that helps with the farming. Uh, it has the best DPS out of all the non-ancient uh, creeps, so uh, can help definitely with farming. Has some extra armor, which is uh, uh, nice, I guess. Also, if you have some sort of stacks, you can farm these with Tornado. Another great uh, farming creeper, the Set of Tormentor. This, of course, has the Hadouken ability, the Shockwave, which helps a lot with farming. And, uh, of course, if taking over these creeps means that you can't kill them, so you lose a bit of farm that way. But it just uh, it really increases your farming speed, uh, having this extra creep with this extra DPS. I mean, this creep does 100 damage, and uh, this does 160 damage. So it's really going to help you farming, and uh, that's why he's now leveling up this enchant after putting two points early into this nature's attendance. The fight down here, and uh, Faces Void is in trouble. He's being feared, he's being silenced, he's being stunned, and he's dead. But now they're going to Death Prophet. Uh, she has SSM available, but didn't use it. And now Nico Baby is also in trouble. He has Heaven Selbert, so it's quite tanky. We go for the Centaur first, and now they're going on Nico Baby, he's getting into a creep, but creep gets get tossed back. And that is a very clean team fight from Ishii, they even keep Lich alive, uh, really well played here. Uh, one thing I would just criticize about Rams is that he should have used this heal earlier. There's like no, no point in saving your heal during team fights or something, just use your heal. Takes over range creep, also very smart for farming. Range creeps, of course, deal piercing damage, which does extra damage against uh, creeps. Draglands, of course, is a very strong item in Enchantress, just uh, boosts your damage up a lot having this extra range. As well as, of course, making you uh, tankier and just uh, allowing you to, to stay a bit safer in fights. Um, here we see a bit of Miss Micro here, should just have uh, attack move with these creeps. And you can see how strong these enchanted creeps are. Uh, you can tank quite a bit of damage with these 1500 HP creeps. Of course, they do so much damage. They do 150 damage against these uh, these uh, melee creeps. That's a lot of damage. The GF chase the lions out of the Roche pit, and now they're rushing themselves with this TA, of course, a very strong Rocha with her Desolator and her Imp Claw. So, of course, the BKB to protect her. They go in Enchantress here, and this uh, a good thing you can do with Enchantress. You can just do a sort of. Um, be a bit of a frontliner sometimes because you're quite tanky. Um, and now you just sit here in the back line and toss those spears and just quite strong as uh, this death prophet. Um, and now you can just hit this lifestealer as long as he doesn't have rage. 
First uh, impetus no longer goes through BKB. So if this uh, um, life steal is rage, you no longer do a lot of damage to him. But um, now they've actually managed to get this team wipe. And they have this uh, uh, Aegis still, so EG are now in firm control of this game. And just after they won the team fight, they're back to pushing out the lanes. He takes over this range creep, which makes this a lot faster to push out the lanes. And uh, meanwhile, they're pushing also out bottom lane, they're pushing mid lane. They're just using this window to farm because they were all really low. So if you just uh, go and push down this tower, the creep was not in a very favorable position. And by the time you get to this tower, uh, the Alliance heroes are always going to be respawned and there's a big chance that you're going to lose this fight because uh, they were all sort of low on HP and mana. So now they're setting up here on this uh, tier 2 tower, trying to see if someone wants to come out and play. And uh, Ramsey sort of goes here in and uh, does some of the baiting but uh, no one's biting so they just go and kill this tower. And that is a nice tower kill for Abed and uh, it's putting um, very firmly in the net with lead here. After the Hurricane Pike, which is pretty much the standard item on Enchantress, he's gone for a Hood of Defiance, makes him a lot of tank here. You're mostly worried about magical damage because you have it's Untouchable against physical damage and also very important thing is his Lifestealer lineup. Untouchable now goes through BKB, so even if his, his Lifestealer is uh, raged, he's still gonna have a very hard time actually hitting this Enchantress. So physical damage is not that much of a concern. Uh, the only really physical damage that they has to be concerned with is the uh, Death Prophet Ultimate. Other than that, it's mostly magic damage. So Hood is just a very strong item in Enchantress in uh, almost all games. And then of course they don't really have any hero who's uh, good at buying these kind of aura items. So it kind of falls to the Enchantress by default. So that's why. It makes sense here in this game just to go for a, a pipe, which is just generally a very strong item. It's not like a hugely magic damage focused lineup that Alliance have, but they have a decent amount of magic damage. And you can see Enchantress has gone from being very under farmed to fourth on the net worth, uh, almost as much farm as this life stealer. And that's just a result of, of fighting well. He's died four times in total, uh, two times since the laning phase, but he's also been getting a lot done and just doing so much damage with all these javelins. Pipe is complete now, next item is going to be, be BKB, that makes a lot of sense. As Enchantress, the damage you deal is just a function of basically of uh, staying away from the opponent and surviving, so getting these very defensive items makes a lot of sense, as as long as you stay alive, you can keep dishing out your damage, and you just naturally have a lot of damage and Radiant of course you can go for attack speed items which will allow you to deal your damage quicker which would be nice but most importantly it's just staying alive and actually being able to do that damage. So another big factor for this BKB is that you can avoid being silenced with that because Death Prophet Silence is kind of annoying. Uh, he's been gone on here by this same, self same Death Prophet, he uses Exorcism so four stuffs up to the high ground here. And now is the chance, you just want to get away here, you want to get away from all these uh, heroes hitting you and probably turn on strength dreads at this stage. Uh, but now you have some distance here, you can start tracking those spears. And in this fight you just want to have impetus on auto cast, makes it easier. I'm trying to see him cool down here so he can't actually dispel the screen protector but uh, he does anyway so um, good job there. And now they have these two kills, uh, importantly you have the death prophet kill. That's probably does have buyback, but it doesn't really matter that much because she has exorcism on cooldown. And this means they can now start pushing high ground. They still have BKB here on TA, not on the Foyce's Void, unfortunately, but um, that's uh, good enough. So they can start hitting this tower, and as Angie just want to turn the back here, heal your teammates a bit, and chuck those spears. You have a lot of damage here thanks to your level uh, 15 talent with 50 damage and uh, just uh, naturally you right clicks. So we just hit this tower from distance. It also has this Ogre Frost Mage, can uh, give us some Frost Armors. Very strong creep in, in these set of situations. Uh, you want to perhaps be a bit more careful with the Ogre Frost Mage. It does a lot of damage here, but um, still it's uh, important not to let this creep die too easily. So we go here on EG, uh, but there's a nice Chrono here being used. 
and Chandos just keeps chucking those spears and that is the team wipe and that is going to be the end of the game. So this is how you play Enchantress off lane, even if you are struggling really hard with the lane, you can just do so much damage later on in the game and that is why Yellow Geniuses first picks this hero. If you want to see more content on various micro heroes, subscribe and ring the bell. And I have another Enchantress game on this channel that I've covered actually in two videos because it's a very long game. So go check those out and always willing, I'll see you there.